Hey indie filmmakers, Griffin here, and I have been shooting a lot of 360 degree videos recently using this camera. So today I want to talk about how to watch 360 degree videos and how to shoot them, edit them, and share them properly on the internet. So when I take this thing out into public, the Ryko Theta S, a lot of people ask me, what is this thing? What is that? What is that? What is that? It's a 360 camera. And I usually just say it's a 360 degree camera. It shoots in all directions at once. It uses two little fisheye lenses, 180 degrees each, and stitches them together to create one spherical view of everything around it. In fact, it's rolling right now. So you can click the link in the annotation or in the description to check out this 360 degree video. Hi, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with how to watch these kind of videos um, on YouTube. If it's displaying properly, if you have an updated browser, you can move around and you can actually just click and drag around to see it. Um, if it doesn't look like this, it might just look like this super stretched out image. Uh, that just means it's not displaying properly. This is kind of cool. You see everything in one image, but it's not the way it's supposed to be displaying. But really the coolest way to watch these kind of videos is on your phone. If you just load up the YouTube app in iOS or Android, you can actually just move the phone around. This is like the main reason I'm shooting 360 and I think the main way that you should be watching it just because this is such an incredibly immersive experience. Uh, you could even throw on some, some VR goggles and some headphones and uh, do some pretty cool things. So that's how to watch them, um, but the trick is shooting them and then trying to figure out how to get them on the internet so that people actually can work with them interactively. So today I want to talk about my workflow for doing that. Let's start by stopping the recording on this camera and we'll just bring in this footage, footage we just shot. And as an aside real quick, I'll say some people have, have commented on the quality of this camera, the Ryko Theta S, and why would I shoot with a camera that's so low quality? But Compared to some of the 360 cameras on the market, this is $340, uh, which is like GoPro priced, pretty cheap for a camera. Uh, and I can carry it around in my pocket. Like I'm still learning this technology, figuring out how to edit it properly. I don't need like a $10,000 360 rig right now. I'd kind of like one, but for now, I think this is the way for me to learn, figure out what works, what doesn't, and then I can upgrade to something more expensive. I'm importing the clips from the camera using image capture on a Mac. And then let's take a look at this file. It's definitely not ready to edit with yet. Right off the camera, it is just two circles inside one HD frame. Uh, these, these two images need to be stitched together. Uh, right now, there's not much I can do with this. So I open up the Ryko Theta app. That's what I use with this camera. And I can just drag in this file. And it'll convert the file for me. After the Ryko Theta app finishes stitching them together, now it creates these files that I can edit. Uh, so if I drop these in the timeline, uh, it's, it's created one rectangular image. Uh, it's kind of like when we look at a map of the globe, but we have to stretch it onto a two-dimensional rectangle. It kind of stretches the, the arctic poles uh, a little bit crazily. But this is a nice rectangle that I can edit. This is a 1920 by 960 image. Uh, but now I can do things like add dissolves. The, the one downside that I don't know how to correct yet, and maybe you do because you're a 3D master, is if I put text on this screen, it's a completely distorted view. So if I put flat two-dimensional text, it's gonna get distorted in a weird way when people watch it. Uh, so that's something I'm not uh, great at yet. The only kind of effect that I'm doing here is recognizing that sometimes I wanna control the default view. Uh, if everyone starts looking this direction, maybe I don't want them looking at this object in the frame. And because this, is, this thing is like perfectly uh, seamless on the ends here, I can just slide it over. So in this case, I can just create two layers, move one of them over, and then bring in a second one to fill in the gap. So now I can control what part of the frame we're looking at, uh, which is something that I'm learning editing 360 videos that now I have to think about the fact that they're gonna turn around and look at something. And now my next shot might have to be a complete 180 from where I thought it should be because they're looking in the wrong direction and I want them to be looking in the right direction when the camera cuts to the next angle. Now that I've done some basic editing with this stuff, I can export a regular web quality file, but I've created a problem because the files off the camera are already, once you transcode them in the and stitch them together in the Ryko app, 
they're ready to go on the web. You put them on YouTube and they have a little bit of metadata in them that says, this is a 360 video and I need you, YouTube, to display it that way, treat it interactively. Now that I've edited it and exported it, I've taken out, I've stripped out the metadata and that's a problem. So once I get this thing exported, luckily there's an app that uh, YouTube has called 360 Video Metadata. All you do is open up a file that you've created. And it says, track zero metadata none found, track one metadata none found. There's nothing there that tells it it's 360. Uh, if I say inject and save, you just give it a new name. So I usually say like 360 or something to let me know I did it. And it saves it again, but with the proper metadata. It says spherical equals true, stitch equals true. Um, and that's it, it doesn't have to do any new transcoding, it just saves a new file. Now that file is ready to be uploaded to YouTube and YouTube knows what to do with it. On Facebook, which supports 360 videos, I don't know if you need the metadata, I noticed there's a checkbox that just says, is this a spherical video? And you can just turn that on. What The cool thing that this points out is that you don't necessarily have to shoot a 360 video to make a 360 video. I imagine any of you with some 3D skills could make any video add the metadata. In fact, I did a test with this. I just took a flat view of the globe, added some spherical metadata, and uploaded it to YouTube, and now it's this like cool, like, ooh, you're like kind of inside the globe, which is weird. Um, but the point is, any of us can, can do 360 video right now. So I hope that gave you a nice overview of how to watch 360 videos, how to handle them. Uh, there's a link in the video description to like a, a YouTube help page that gives you the 360 video metadata tool, which you'll want, and some other information about what browsers support this stuff. Um, so that's it for me today. Thank you for watching. Next week, it's Thanksgiving, and on Cyber Monday, following that, I'm gonna do my best filmmaking deals, deals for filmmakers on Cyber Monday, filmmaking gear that you might want that's at a great discount. I do it every year, and you guys seem to like it, so I'll see you then.